Today we're going to be taking a look at the Raspad 3, which SunFounder have sent me to review and share with you. The Raspad 3 is designed to hold a Raspberry Pi 4B and turned it into an all-in-one tablet style device with a large 10.1 inch touchscreen. It sells for around $250 on Amazon or $220 from their web store. I'll talk a bit more about the price once we've had a look at what's included and what it does. I'll leave a link to it in the video description if you'd like to get your own. In addition to the Raspad, you'll also need to get yourself a Raspberry Pi 4 and an SD card to complete the build. I'm going to be using an 8GB version of the Raspberry Pi 4B, as this is one that I've got available at the moment, but you can use a 2 or 4GB version as well. Let's take a look at what's in the box. First up is the user manual. It's one of the best I've seen for these types of kits. It's very well presented with illustrations for each step and I'm pretty sure that even a child of around 10 years old wouldn't have much trouble following the instructions to put it together. The English is pretty good for the most part but there are a couple of gems along the way. Underneath the sponge protector we've got the rouse pad in a plastic sleeve. And under that we've got a compartment with the power cable, internal cables and accessories and even a screwdriver to put it together with. So the RAS pad includes everything you need to get it running, even the heat sinks for your power are included. You literally just need to add your Raspberry Pi and SD card. From the manual it looks like there's a version available with a pre-flashed micro SD card, but I couldn't find an option for this on their website or on Amazon, so it's possibly a carryover from a previous version. So that's what's included in the box, now let's take a look at the RAS pad. On the front we've got the large 10.1 inch touch display. On the left side we've got an Ethernet port, three USB 3 ports, a full size HDMI port, a headphone jack and a power socket. On the back is a thin slot to pass a GPIO ribbon cable through so that you can access the PAS GPIO pins. On the right hand side we've got a battery indicator, buttons to control the volume and brightness, a power button and a micro SD card slot. There isn't really much on the rear, we've just got the screw holes and some ventilation holes and speaker grills. The Raspad is roughly the same size as the 10.2 inch iPad. Let's use the included screwdriver and put the Raspad together. Underneath the back cover you'll see there's a relatively large breakout board on the right hand side. A pair of speakers are on the bottom and another smaller breakout board on the left hand side. Along the top is a 3 cell 3200mAh battery pack. We start off by plugging the USB and Ethernet cables into the power, then add the HDMI and power cables. We then add the SD card adapter. Next we'll screw down the power and plug the SD card adapter into the breakout board. Now we've got three heat sinks to stick onto the power. There is also this accelerometer shim to push onto the GPIO pins to auto-rotate the display. I'm not sure why they don't have proper female header pins on the shim, it's just supposed to be pushed onto the exposed pins. I don't really like this design as it feels like the shim can just fall off if the pad is bumped, and you aren't sure that all of the pins are actually making contact with the shim. Lastly, we need to add the fan to the back cover. This is mounted directly onto the cover and pushes the air out of the case rather than pulling air in. When the case is closed, the fan is positioned directly above the Pi's heatsink. Now that we've got everything installed, let's close it up. Remember when working with electronics, we don't cure minor hiccups with violence. Next we need to burn our operating system image to our SD card. They have their own operating system which I'll try first. This can just be downloaded from the website and is then flashed with a utility like Etcher. The power adapter is quite bulky, but it needs to provide quite a lot of power to the ROS pad to power the power, the display and charge the battery when it's empty. The first boot takes about a minute to complete and you've then got a couple of settings to get through. It would have been nice if one of the steps included setting up a Wi-Fi network as well, but you can just head over to the Wi-Fi menu in the taskbar to set that up afterwards. 
Subsequent boots take a little under 30 seconds on the standard operating system, and they do have an option to just turn the display on and off with a short press of the power button if you're going to be briefly away. The operating system looks quite similar to Raspberry Pi OS, but it does have a custom menu which suits a tablet style interface. They've tried to make the operating system reasonably touch friendly, and you're able to get through tasks like using a spreadsheet or word processing app using an on-screen keyboard. But the keys are quite small and it's just not anywhere near as easy as using a keyboard and mouse. This isn't a fault with the hardware, the touchscreen on the Raspad is actually pretty good, it's responsive and fairly accurate. These apps are just inherently designed to be used with a keyboard and mouse, so there aren't things that can be done with the touchscreen like a right click. Also the small icons are difficult to press accurately. Take an app like Minecraft for example. If you attempt to do anything with the touchscreen, it just results in continuous downward digging, and you're then unable to close the app. It does work well with some games, and I think the tablet would be well suited for education where students do drag and drop programming. It would also work well for home automation apps with a touch interface, or other purpose-built touchscreen apps. I think you'd have a hard time using the tablet for apps which require regular text input without using an external keyboard. The speaker quality is also not bad if you're using it to stream music or videos. You also have the option to run different operating systems or flavors of operating systems on it quite quickly and easily. I tried booting up Raspberry Pi OS and it worked perfectly, including the touchscreen input without any additional setup. I also tried running RetroPie and that worked well too. It's actually quite a nice package for a RetroPie system, as you've got a portable battery powered display and speakers all in one unit. I tried connecting an external display to the Raspad, and while this works well, it does disable the touchscreen. I'm not sure why they've done this, as it would still be useful to have the touch inputs with an external display, but this is just something to be aware of. The specs claim 5 hours of battery life. I managed to get a little under 4 hours, but this obviously depends on how you use it. If you're running apps that don't require much processing power, and you've dimmed the display, then you'll get better battery life. I then tried the auto-rotate function, and that didn't seem to work. There isn't anything mentioned in the manual about a setup or use conditions, so I assume that this should just work when used with the operating system. I wondered if the shim that I was initially concerned about wasn't connected properly, so I opened it up and added my own header pins to it. I then closed it all up again and this didn't work either, so I think my auto-rotation shim is just faulty. If I had to think of a few things that I'd like to see on future versions of the Raspad, battery level feedback to the operating system is the first thing that comes to mind. There's a battery level indicator on the side of the device, and this overlays a low battery level warning on the display when it gets low, but if you don't actually turn the Raspad off then it eventually just dies. I'd like to see a low power shutdown script integrated into the operating system. Next would be an option to add an internal SSD. There's a lot of free space inside the Raspad, and there's even a free USB 3 port, so it would have been pretty easy to add a space or adapter to add a small SSD. Although there is a slot on the top for the GPIO ribbon cable to pass through, you either have to open the case up every time you want to connect something to the GPIO pins, or have a ribbon cable dangling out the back permanently. I would have preferred to see a set of GPIO pins brought out to the side of the case, which can then be plugged in and removed easily. My last suggestion is not so much a change to the Raspad, but perhaps a future variant that would be to create a CM4 version. I get why they've designed the Raspad around the much more common Raspberry Pi 4B board, but given that it's mounted inside and has a number of cables connected to it, it would be a lot simpler to just plug in a CM4 module. It could just be an easy option for those who want a Raspberry Pi tablet and intend on leaving their Pi inside the tablet permanently. 
Getting back to the price point I mentioned earlier, at around $220 to $250, once you've added a part to it, you're pretty close to $300. This does seem quite high if you consider that you can get other tablets for around $200, but I think you need to take into account the use cases for the Raspad. There are definitely better options if you're looking for a cheap tablet, but the Raspad offers makers the same level of flexibility and adaptability that a Raspberry Pi comes with. Being centered around a Raspberry Pi, you have a world of possibilities for operating systems, peripherals, sensors, adapters, and input devices, which typically don't exist on other platforms. How many tablets do you know of that have GPIO pins available directly to connect a moisture sensor to, or drive a servo with? With the Raspad, you're paying for the convenience of the Raspberry Pi platform in a compact, all-in-one form factor, and that's pretty cool. Let me know what you think of the Raspad in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.